I've noticed that the majority of people sharing bullet journal content online are actually missing the reflection aspect, but I think it might be because they don't actually know how to do it. Reflection is our opportunity to gain insights about how we've been spending our time and consider whether these actually align with what we want in life, but it's a lot easier to do with a laid out series of steps. When it comes to doing anything, I don't like to do things that are pointless or time wasters, so we want to make sure that your reflection process does not turn into that. We have four different types of reflection as part of the bullet journal method. So we have daily reflection, of which there are two types. We've got weekly reflection, monthly reflection, and yearly reflection. Though I like to call this new journal reflection because I do it with each new journal setup. Each of these do look a little bit different though and have us focusing on different parts of our bullet journal. So let's have a closer look at each of those. As mentioned before, we have two different types of daily reflection. We've got what we call passive reflection and active reflection. Passive reflection is the type that you're probably already doing. It's the part where we actually log things in our bullet journal. As we're doing our logging, even if it's only subconsciously, we're making choices about where to put information and even just what gets recorded in general. This is a form of passive reflection. Even if you're not focusing on it, you are slightly filtering yourself when you're putting things into your journal. While this small amount of of filtering and sorting it doesn't necessarily give us huge amounts of insight immediately, it is essential for the types of reflection that follow. Our other type of daily reflection, or active reflection, actually has two different types itself. We have the start of day active reflection and the end of day active reflection. In the bullet journal method, writer Carol calls this AM and PM reflection, but not everybody works on a regular nine to five schedule. So I'm just gonna call this start of day and end of day. In our start of day reflection though, this is where we're offloading any thoughts that you have before you get started with your day. I know some people don't like the term brain dump, so you could call this a mind unwind or something similar, but we're effectively just trying to get all of those thoughts out of our head and into our journals. The next step is then to review any notes from the day or days prior. Are there any that actually warrant exploring further? What you can do is denote those with some kind of signifier or what Ryder talks about is turning the little dash into a plus symbol. So elaborate on this. Give me more. The next step is to review the pages of the current month to remind you of any of your open tasks. As part of this review process, you're also looking back through the pages of your current month to remind you of any open tasks. Things that are going to get done today can then be migrated into your current daily log, but make sure it's only the stuff that you want to get done today. There's no point migrating a bunch of things into your daily log that you're not actually wanting to action today. Once you have these things migrated into your daily log, you can then start marking any priorities. It is encouraged to limit the number of priorities that you mark, because if everything's a priority, then effectively nothing is a priority. You won't end up having the things that really matter stand out if you have every single task with a little priority asterisk next to it. This start of day daily reflection though can kind of be thought of as planning for the day ahead. What do we want to get done? What are we moving into our daily log that we're going to action today? Between the start of day and end of day active reflection periods is the daily logging process. This is the part where we rapid log any of the things that come up during the day into that daily log. So our tasks, our notes, our events. At the end of the day, this is when we get to the PM reflection, or what I'm calling the end of day reflection. This is more about cleaning up what we've recorded in the daily log and reviewing the day that was to help you unwind. An initial step for this one is to log any remaining thoughts that you have, so any tasks, events, or notes. And then once that logging is complete, you can scan through your logged entries. While we're doing the scan initially, the first thing we're really trying to do is just check off everything that has been finished. This can also be a moment to appreciate the progress that we've made. A lot of the time, if you're anything like me, we kind of dwell a little more on the stuff that we didn't do rather than considering the things that we did get done. So give yourself a pat on the back. You did the thing. Once you've marked off those completed tasks though, it's then time to address each of the open tasks that you have. And you'll want to look at each of those individually. In this part of the reflection process, we're considering what we actually want to keep. We're asking ourselves things like, is this task vital? Does it matter? What are the consequences of not doing it? What this reflection process is going to help us do is weed out distractions or the stuff that isn't vital, the stuff that we don't want to be doing or isn't taking us to the places we want to go. The advice is to strike those out in your journal. I personally don't like the way it looks, so I don't do it myself, but we don't want to take those things forward with us. 
Another optional part of this process is to add a win from the day, or the most important thing that happened, as a headline next to the day's date. Another optional thing that you can do is use the time between your end of day reflection and your start of day reflection for the next day as kind of like a digital detox. A time away from screens, your phone, whatever else. If you're worried about this taking a lot of time, I completely feel you on that. This really does sound like a lot, especially a lot to do on a daily basis. We are busy people with many things to do. We ain't got time to go through the many tasks on our to-do lists and ask ourselves 27 questions about every single one of them. Don't worry, we can make this take less time, but one of the solutions you're probably not gonna like. It's practice. Boo. Yes. She said the dirty word. Much like getting started with anything new, it can take some time to get used to and it can take some time to get better at it. Reflection is exactly the same. The more you do this reflection process though, the better you'll get at it and the faster you'll get at it. Now I know that is super unsatisfying, we like quick gratification, I completely feel you on that. So one of the things that you could do to help make this process just a little bit faster is just by narrowing your focus. This isn't a long-term fix, but initially it can be really useful for making the reflection process just a bit more manageable. Narrowing our focus can be done in a couple of ways, so this could be by just asking yourself one question regarding each of your daily log entries. Something like, was this essential? Or did this action align with what I want in life? If you want to stretch yourself just a little bit, try and make this question open-ended, so not just a yes or no kind of answer. So rather than, did it align with what I want, you could ask, how did it align with what I want? Another way we can narrow our focus is by cherry picking. So more like scanning through your daily log and picking out the one to three things that added the most value and the one to three that were just distractions. The third way that we can narrow our focus is by time restricting. So if your reflection process is just taking way too much time, just give yourself five minutes, set a timer, go through as much as you can. You'll find that over time with doing this, you'll get through more and more with that five minute process. All in all, consistency with reflection is more important than time taken. So doing one to five minutes each day is gonna pay off more than doing 30 minutes once a week. Having said that though, we do of course have the weekly reflection process as part of the bullet journal method. And that one is similar, but a little bit different. Doing a weekly reflection allows us to see a bit of a bigger picture than just the day to day. We're kind of seeing how all of these actions have accumulated across the week to get us to where we are. This also gives us an opportunity to break down our monthly goals or aims into smaller, more manageable actions. In terms of the process for this one though, we wanna start by updating the monthly log with the events and happenings from the past week. If you were doing the daily headlines from the PM or end of day reflection in the daily reflection section, then that can help you out with this. After updating the monthly log, we then want to skim through the past week's entries, both on the daily logs and any weekly logs if you use them. What this is going to allow us to do is just jog our memory for our weekly log setup. When it comes to setting up a weekly log, as aligned with the bullet journal system, the left-hand page is going to be dedicated for a written reflection for the week that was, and the right-hand page is a task list for the week coming. This style of weekly log is a newer addition to the bullet journal method, compared to the daily log and the monthly log and those kind of things. But for the reflection portion of our weekly log, we have two options. You can either do the short version, which is faster. In this one, you rapid log any takeaways from the past week, so ideas, feelings, observations, and you can also make notes from what you've noticed regarding your previous entries. Or we have the longer, more thorough version. This is long form journaling or more like a traditional journal entry. You're still recording the same information, you're just going into a bit more depth with it. Once you've finished your journaled reflection though, it's then time to consider what you actually want to take time for in the week ahead or your migrating tasks into the tasks section of your weekly log. Much like our start of day daily reflection, in this part you're just going through your previous entries and bringing anything forward that you wanna work on in the week ahead. I know we're talking about a lot of steps in this video and having a cheat sheet could be useful. We do have a free printable that you can download. There's a link in the description box below. But our next type of reflection is monthly reflection. And this is done as part of the monthly migration process. Essentially, this is the process of setting up for the new month and closing out the last month. So we're transferring entries from one month to the next, 
or from other places in our journal to the next month. This transfer process is done by rewriting though, which offers us just the right amount of friction to make this reflection process easier. To do monthly reflection as part of migration, you want to go through each of your open entries from the month and pause to consider each one. Are we going to bring this forward into the next month? If you feel resistance to rewrite them, that's good. Something that's not worth you rewriting is probably not something that's worth doing. We can use this reflection process to further weed out distractions and give us the freedom that comes with reclaiming our time. So we can spend time doing the stuff that does actually matter. It's a very similar idea to the daily process. So going through all the open tasks, asking ourselves questions like, is this vital? Does it matter? Are there any consequences for not doing this thing? And if the answer to any of those are yes, we bring it forward. If the answer to all of them is no, we can scrap those things. Over time, we get better and better at this though. We're more easily able to identify whether something should get moved forward or is something that we can leave or scrap. Our next type of reflection though is yearly reflection or what I like to call new journal reflection because we do this process with each new notebook that we set up. This type of reflection happens through new journal migration but the process for this one is a little bit different to the ones we've talked about previously. Our first step here is to review our index and reflect on whether those collections need to get moved forward into our next journal. This is kind of like a wider lens view of what we've been spending our time on. While our daily log tells us what we're doing on the day to day and our weekly log tells us what we've been doing week to week. Our index tells us what we've been spending time on during the lifespan of the notebook. If you're like me and you don't keep an index, you can just do this process by flipping through all of the pages of your journal and paying attention to, do I want to bring this collection forward with me? Is it vital? Does it matter? Are there any consequences for not bringing it forward? The second step for new journal migration is then going through your notebook and considering any open entries. So while previously we were looking at the index for whole collections that we want to move forward, in this one we're going a little bit more granular and again just looking at individual entries. As we talked about, all of these types of reflection can be time consuming, but one of the problems with not doing reflection is that you can actually end up bullet journaling wrong. Yes, there are wrong ways to bullet journal. In fact, there are six enemies of bullet journaling that we need to watch out for. So to find out more information about those and how to avoid them, click or tap on the video we have up here. And I'll see you over there.